So a student investigate the energy changes of a mass. So we're studying energy change. Interesting. Uh, of the mass oscillating on the vertical spring. So it's going to go point, 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 point like that. Okay. The student draw a graph of the variation with displacement x of energy E of the oscillation as shown. So they are showing us some energy graph here. What is this graph? If you recognize it, you're like, oh, I know, miss. This one, our free answer, is it? So what is this graph? Is it total energy? Is it potential energy? Or is it kinetic energy? They already told you the choices here. This is kind of like MCQ, but not MCQ. So <laughs> how do you know which one is it? Well, you need to look at some characteristics of the graph. Whatever energy graph this is, when the displacement is max, so at, well, x equals to maximum, uh, you have the lowest or zero energy. So the energy is zero. So what energy is zero when you are at a maximum displacement? Well, the answer is kinetic energy. Because as you go here, at one point, you stop moving. Okay, if you find it hard to imagine, just draw it here. Lah. Okay, let's say you compress maximum displacement upwards. You're going to stop moving here at this point. And at this, uh, well, let's just call this x max. Lah. Okay, and then before that, it's going up and then it's going to come down already. So that's how it looks like. Okay, so kinetic energy, let's just write that. Just writing kinetic energy is one mark. Wow, this is confirmed like MCQ. Okay, let's give ourselves an A one mark, I think. Yep. Okay. Next, the student repeats the investigation but with a smaller amplitude. Oh, that's interesting. Smaller amplitude. So A has decreased. Or in the past year formula sheet, you will see them right X not as the amplitude. I prefer A because A for amplitude. The maximum value is now found to be 1.8 millijoules. So what does that mean? Huh? So whatever this top value is, Originally, it is 2.4 millijoules, looks like it. Okay, you can double check your graph. Come on, we zoom in a bit. But now we have decreased to what? 1.8 millijoules. So somehow you have dropped down to here. So the top of this curve has gone lower. But then they ask you this question. What is the change in amplitude? Use the figure to determine the change in amplitude. And you must explain your working. Wow, how do you determine the change in amplitude? Well, you know this thing will be lower. The curve will somehow be lower. But how will the amplitude change? Will it be... Hmm, I ask you to think about it. Will it be like this? Wow, very ugly. Will it be like that at the same amplitude? Or will the amplitude be smaller? Something like this. You think about it. In the meantime, I'll rub off this out of shape graphs. So how we can think of it this is... What is this value up here? These 2.4 megajoules is what we call the total energy. Which happens to also be the uh, maximum kinetic energy. Ke max. It's all the same. And we know an equation for that. We know that that is going to be half ma omega. Ma. Let's just call this e total. Lah. Ma omega. I forgot the square, sorry. Okay, so that is the formula for that. So if your energy has decreased, okay, so this one is decreased. They're asking you how will the amplitude change? Will it decrease, increase or not? Aha, this is where you kind of have to think a little bit. Mass is mass changing. Ah? Mass. Did we change this mass? No, they didn't say that. They didn't say they changed the mass. So okay, mass is still constant. How about frequency? I put a box here to show that it's constant. How about frequency omega? Angular frequency, sorry. Is the angular frequency still the same or is it smaller, bigger? How do you know? Okay, so you remember a bit. What is omega? Omega is 2 pi f or you can say omega is 2 pi over t. How do we know the frequency change or not? Period. Oh, for a spring, uh, the period of oscillation is 2 pi m over k. k is not changing, m is not changing, so t is not changing. So this is all constant. So that also means this is constant. Ah, so we can put a box on it. Okay, so this is not changing. What's changing? E and A. 
So if E decreases, A is going to decrease by some ratio. Lah, okay, I'll just put that. Okay, so to write out, to summarize this flow of thought, you have the same mass. That's why we put a box on it to say it's constant. You have the same T. Because you have the same mass, therefore you have the same T. And therefore, you have the same frequency. So none of this is changing. So all we have is E decrease, A decrease. Okay, so E is proportional to A squared. That's how we can use this to ratios. It's your best friend. We can use ratio to find uh, what is the new amplitude. So your original equation is E proportional to A squared. So now how to do MP, how to do this ratio ratio thing? Uh, they didn't tell us it's two times smaller or not. Or they just give us this number. So we're gonna use the another one one other method to calculate the ratios. Okay, if this is true, it means E equals to some constant times A. If K is a constant, it should be same no matter what energy amplitude you have. Constant. This is kind of like AS paper three if you remember. Okay, if K is a constant, means it should not change. Therefore. Your original energy and amplitude, I'll call this E1, equals to K, which is the same as the new energy over the new amplitude squared. Don't forget the square. Now you're trying to find what? The new amplitude. Oh, we need to find change in amplitude. So we're trying to find what is A2. So let's rearrange a little bit. Actually, never mind. I just plug in all the values for you. Original energy is what? From the graph. Right up here, 2.4 millijoules. So we could highlight that. That's our original. So let's just write it down. 2.4, I have no space really. 2.4 millijoule over the original amplitude. What was that? 1.5. That's how far you went. Okay, this is our amplitude. So let's write that. 1.5 cm. Then, how are? Then you have... On the right side, the new energy, which is smaller now, so your M amplitude should also be smaller by some value. Okay, so you just do some rearranging. Lah. I can skip the steps, but let me just write out for you. So A2 will be big square root. Got plus minus or not? We don't care. 1.8 millijoules over 2.4 millijoules times 1.5 squared. So you should get about 1.29999 or 1.3 millijoules. Sorry, 1.3 cm. I should not write that here. Ah, no more space. 1.3 cm as your new amplitude. But be careful, ah, they want change in amplitude. So you need to find what is your change in amplitude. So original amplitude minus the new amplitude. So I mean, you can take the absolute value so don't care about positive or negative so originally is from the graph is 1.5 but now it's smaller already so 1.5 minus 1.3 change will be 0 0.20 or 0 0.2 cm so let's just put 0 0.2 hey this one ah uh, 1 sf a bit dangerous put another 0 la. at least it's 2 sf this thing alone takes 3 marks Woo! where do the marks come from let's check it out so if you see this mark scheme here, it's all B1, B1 mark. So phew, very good. Uh, if you missed out some of the working... But then, oh, if you miss out some of the working, oh, you won't get your B1 mark. So it's good to write everything that... Your thought process, just write it down. Because B1 marks, if you don't write it, you don't get it. Okay? Uh, first one, we use this method, proportional, proportional, to show that, oh, we know that energy is proportional to amplitude squared. Uh, and then we also show that the new amplitude uh, is 1.3 from the calculation and therefore change amplitude is 0 0.2. So that's B1 mark for each step. Okay. So over here, we're going to do this. Where is the thing? Ah, yes, this working must show. This is B1. Where is the other one? You get 1.3, that's B1. And then your last one, 0 0.2, B1. Three marks for this. Okay. Now, is this the end of the question? E, technically, yes. But to add on, so we know a smaller uh, total energy means a smaller amplitude. If I ask you to sketch the graph, how would you sketch it out? Now we know the answer. So if you want to sketch out the graph, 
we know that we will pass through a smaller top part at 1.8 up here, millijoules, but our amplitude has also decreased to 1.3, which is what we calculate on top here. So 1.3 is somewhere... Wow, my eyes can barely see. 4.3, somewhere here. And the other side also 1.3, somewhere 4.3, somewhere here. So if you were to draw a graph, it would look something like this. Wow. Okay, you just try your best to draw a parabolic quadratic graph. I'm trying to make it smooth now, okay? So that if there's a sketch draw a sketch question, they want you to sketch, then you have to sketch it like that. Notice how it is a shift. Like the whole graph just shifted down when you decrease the total energy. And people just move up. It's not like you squash the graph. If you squash the graph, it will have the same amplitude, but you're shifting the entire graph down. 